In this video, we are going to look at fuzzing a WebSocket service using a payload word list with the WebSocket Turbo Intruder extension. Okay, let's go. So here I have a WebSocket message in repeater. I'm gonna right click in there, go to extensions, WebSocket Turbo Intruder, send to WebSocket Turbo Intruder. There we go. We get our blank canvas ready to work with. I'm going to position this so it's a little bit bigger on the screen. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to work with the basic example to start. And let's say what I wanna do here is I want to send um, just within, you know, we have no structure here. Um, just wanna send base payloads um, right in here. Well, we don't, it doesn't even really matter what our message is if we're not transforming a default message anyways. But let's pretend that maybe we have a little bit of structure to make it a more realistic example. Uh, let's say, for example, that we have maybe something like JSON. This is going to be some key. And then we're going to have our value, right? And let's say that right now we want to fuzz this value here. And wow, look at that. Look at Burp with its, uh, with its highlighting there of that JSON right away. Um, so we'd like to fuzz right here. So maybe instead of value, um, I'll just use a kind of payload identification system where I'm going to use uh, a dollar sign and then a number to indicate uh, which payload that corresponds to. Uh, I find it's helpful to uh, adopt a, a practice like this because you might have situations where you have multiple payload positions that you want to accommodate. So I'm just going to use the dollar sign number scheme here that uh, that I sometimes use. Personally, you can use anything, right? It's uh, totally flexible. You've got the Python that you can, uh, that you can handle. I'm going to import the time library. You'll see why in a bit so i'm going to import uh the os library here because what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through a file um, but before we do that uh, one thing i like to do is just create a what i call is a template variable and set that to what is called a payload right up here right so when we create this function q websockets or rather when we implement this function q websockets we get the payload passed to it the payload being the content from here and I would just like to store that in the, in the uh, in this template here because we're going to modify this. Uh, uh, we'll we'll keep using the template to modify the payload as we go. Uh, and then I'm going to iterate through the contents of a file. So I'm going to open a file here, and uh, hopefully this path works. What I'm using here is a fuzzing file from uh, Seclists. This one is just called, as you can see a big list of naughty strings. So we're really just looking for any kind of uh, poorly handled inputs. I'm gonna say, uh, you know, with this open as the file, uh, for each line in file, what we're going to do is, uh, actually first we'll do a little sleep. Uh, just, uh, yeah, just one second there because I'd like to, uh, I'd like to see our, our payloads, our uh, messages out corresponding with our messages in. This is just suiting our situation. You might have different needs depending on how your WebSocket server operates. Um, and then I'm going to uh, build the payload. So what I'd like to do is build the payload. And you know what actually might be um, helpful here is, is building a method for doing this, especially if you're going to be doing this type of thing a lot and you're going to be uh, making really custom scripts for WebSocket attacks, you might want to build a little bit more structure and a little bit more uh, functionality that is more reusable, that encapsulates some things. So I'm going to show you one approach that I often take. I'm just going to call this uh, build payload. And it's going to take, uh, you know, perhaps confusingly, uh, a parameter I've just named payload. Uh, um, and then... Um, a set of arguments, uh, additional parameters. And what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of these arguments. Um, where we're going to, uh, maybe I should just call this, uh, I'll call this return payload. I think I can drop an underscore in there. I'm no, I'm no pylon, or <laughs> see, I called it pylon. I was going to say, I'm no Python expert, as you can probably tell, because I'm looking off screen from the script that I've already written for this. Um, so return payload, where uh, we take the payload that is coming in, 
And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to replace. Um, we want to find that dollar sign. And then we're looping through uh, for every uh, payload position that we have. And then returning uh, what I've called our return payload. Okay. Um, I hope this isn't uh, isn't too confusing. So basically, for the build payload, we're taking a um, a payload here, which is basically going to be like our our template. Maybe I should call that template <laughs> instead, um, instead of payload. Yeah, let's call it template. I think that's less confusing. Um, so we're taking a template, and then we're taking uh, a number of arguments, and basically the arguments here are going to be each of our actual payloads that go into each position. So the way that this is going to work is we call it, uh, we send it our template, and then we send it, you know, payload uh, for position one. So it would be like, you know, the, the first time through, it would be payload one for position one, and then it would be payload one for position uh, two, and, and so on, depending on how many positions you have. So it gives you some flexibility if you have multiple payload positions. Here we just have one, um, so we don't really need it, but I think it'll be helpful potentially in later examples. Um, so basically, it's just saying, you know, we're, we're taking our template, and then depending on the number of args that are specified, uh, it will, uh, you know, replace, it will automatically assume that we're using this notation, dollar sign one, dollar sign two, and replace those at the corresponding positions. I hope that makes sense. If not, it's there. You can read through it. Uh, you can go learn Python. Um, so, um, what we're then going to do is for our payload here that we're constructing, we're going to call the build uh, payload method. And I'm going to send it the template, and then I'm going to send it the line from the file, right? That's really all it is. Um, obviously, I need to spell template correctly, and then I need to spell line correctly. That one, the last one's a bit easier. Um, so each line in the file, each payload from our file, is going to be sent with our template, which is our message here, to the build payload function which is going to replace the first position um, with each payload each time it goes through. And then what we're going to do finally is take our connection, uh, which is by default connection one, and we're going to queue up the payload, which I also need to spell correctly. And I'm going to delete this, which was just part of the uh, template example here. So uh, this looks right to me. And hopefully it runs, otherwise I will uh, redo the video, I guess. But I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, everything looks defined. Let's see how it goes. It looks like it's working. All right. Let's inspect the messages here. And conveniently, we have uh, our um, client, our, our message to the server and our messages to the client uh, intertwined here. So um, look at that. We have all of these bad strings going in. This, these first cases maybe looked uh, look like um, the script isn't working, but these are actually the payloads within the file. Um, remember, this is just a file of strings that should cause unintended behavior. So, of course, you're going to see values like null and true and false and, and, and so on in there. So everything actually looks great um, with actually one exception. That one exception is that it looks like there's probably an extra new line in these messages, and uh, maybe that's going to cause us some issue if there's a, a JSON parser that is having a problem with those. Um, or either way, it's you know it's probably going to pollute our, our payloads there. So I think what we need to do is strip the new line from the line that comes in. And so I just need to remind myself how to do that in Python. 
Uh, let's see if I have a um, reference here. Let's go browser time. Python. Strip new line. It's probably just something called strip if I had to guess. Use strip. Okay. Can we call it directly on line? I think line is just a string. So let's see if that works. All right. Uh, some of these are looking better. Uh, you'll see that there are there is kind of a weird quirk there in that we had this dump of messages uh, to the server. Uh, oh, and now we have an error. Uh, it looks like it's just from reading the uh, the bad list of strings, though. Uh, and we have this dump of messages from the server to the client. I think this is some issue with a um, our, our queue not being cleaned from the last running of this. I think this is potentially a bug with WebSocket uh, Turbo Intruder, but I'll uh, investigate this later. I think that's probably successful. I think maybe if we start this fresh, uh, it's going to look about right. And good, there it does, right? So now we have these messages to and from the server where we have our JSON and there's no extra trailing new line. We have stripped that from the strings coming in from the file. Now, one other thing that you might want to be aware of that you might want to add uh, logic to handle is depending on your payload list, if you do have some type of structured data like JSON here, um, if our payloads contain double quotes, for example, that's going to break the structure um, or if they contain, you know, like backslashes, right? So um, what you might want to do is come up with um, s add some type of logic to make sure that your JSON escaping your payloads or escaping for whatever context to make sure that your payloads actually get in without breaking the structure of your message. Then again, maybe um, the intent of your attack is to break the structure of your message, in which case, don't worry about it. Let it happen. Uh, see what the results are. But I would recommend you know doing both, right? Sending payloads to see what happens when you're absolutely obliterating the intended structure of messages and also send payloads that are uh, going within the confines of, of that structure. So uh, that I hope was a, a relatively um, simple uh, illustration and demonstration of how to produce uh, Jython errors from reading files, <laughs> but also how to set up uh, custom WebSocket attacks using WebSocket Turbo Intruder. Um, what I like to do is I like to build constructs like this um, over time and uh, and uh, you know I increasingly uh, improve the uh, uh, the reusability of code for these types of attacks as with Turbo Intruder, such that you know in the when I'm dealing with a new application in the future, I'm not coding something from scratch again because I don't spend every day all day coding, so I'm not perfectly proficient in Python or any language these days. Uh, but it, it lets me just go to my archive of, of scripts, take what I need, drop it in. Uh, it's a, a great approach. And yeah, there's something weird happening here because seemingly uh, this is still reading lines from the file. So uh, some process has not been fully halted, which uh, again, I do think that these are some bugs within uh, WebSocket Turbo Intruder, uh, which uh, at some point I will go and I promise I will document and report as issues. <laughs> Um, it's a it's a great tool and I, I do appreciate it. I'm sure it'll uh, see uh, improvements and fixes in the future. All right. Hope that was useful. Uh, good luck out there.